There was a time when sagebrush dominated the American West, covering nearly half of the land. And though this may look like a dry, harsh environment, it's actually teeming with life. Pronghorn, yule deer, sage grouse, and brewer sparrows all make their home here. People also live and work here. They hunt, watch wildlife, hike, and pursue other outdoor passions. But over the years, one of the largest habitats in the United States has been shrinking. Today, only about half is left. With millions of acres of sagebrush destroyed by development and disturbance, the overall health of this important habitat is at risk. Now there's a race to restore this iconic Western landscape before it's too late. Important allies have emerged in our fight to save the sage. One of these is the Abandoned Mine Lands Program. The Abandoned Mine Land Program in Wyoming has been reclaiming mine sites for over 30 years. Historically, we used a few native grasses to prevent erosion on the new surfaces. We have been adding shrub and forbs to our seed mixes to try to increase the diversity of our plant community on our reclaimed mine sites. The Nature Conservancy in Wyoming is working along with public agencies to restore those lands. And TNC's Sagebrush Sea Program is tackling similar threats across multiple states with a variety of tactics. One strategy is to use technology to improve the survival rate of first-year seedlings of both sagebrush and other native plants. When you look at sagebrush, you might not think that it's fragile, but it really is. It makes these teeny tiny little seeds that make teeny tiny little seedlings. And in most years, it just doesn't rain enough for those seedlings to survive. What we're trying to do is to give those seedlings a leg up using something called seed technology. This is an approach that's used a lot in agriculture where the seeds are modified to make the seedlings grow better. TNC's seed technology work starts in the lab. One way that we're trying to improve sagebrush seedling survival is to increase the amount and size of the roots when they're really young. This would allow them access to water longer during the summer when the snow is melted and water is a really scarce resource. We've been testing this in the lab by adding a high phosphorus fertilizer when we grow sagebrush seedlings. And we've shown that when we add that fertilizer, we can grow about three times as many roots as without it, and those roots are about three inches longer. That might not seem like a big difference, but when you're in the field, that might be the difference between a seedling surviving through the summer and a seedling dying. But positive results in the lab don't guarantee success in the field where plants face freezing temperatures, snow, drought, and being eaten. Now it's time to test our ideas in the field. I'm at an old mine site where the restoration work has just finished, and we're planting bare seeds as well as seeds that are packaged with high phosphorus fertilizer. Next spring, we'll come back and see how many seedlings are alive and how long they survive into the summer months. Our hope is that the seeds that are packaged with the fertilizer survive longer into those months without water, but we have to actually collect the data to see what's happening. The root enhancing seed technology is just one of the things the Nature Conservancy is doing to help bring native plants back to the sagebrush ecosystem. New problems need to be met with new innovations, and this I think is a really exciting example of doing just that. We're losing about a million acres a year of sagebrush to fires and other kinds of disturbances. So we need to be able to restore much bigger areas much faster than we can right now. Otherwise, we stand to lose a lot of the wildlife and working lands that are so important to Wyoming's economy and way of life. We hope that our approach to restoration will revive the sagebrush sea in Wyoming and across the West. <laughs>